Hey guys, what's up? So today, got a bus update and I actually have stuff to update you guys on. So um, a few things have changed since the last video. Um, the first thing has something to do with three. Um, this is something that um, just kind of came to me. Uh, so, you know, I figured in this update video I kind of talk about it. Um, I'm going to shut this. Basically, I've decided that 3 is going to be kept for now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use it for dry storage. Uh, because, as you guys see, I have a lot of bus parts. And there are bus parts in 59 that I will be keeping. And I've looked into what a dry storage unit over back behind the RVs would cost. And it's literally a few dollars more a month than what 3 is costing us to keep here. So, um... The plan is to keep three. Uh, I'm gonna obviously come in here and clean it up a little bit. Um, my other plan is because the Wayne lifeguard windows allow a lot of sunlight to come in here, is to get something to cover the windows. Um, I don't know what I'll be using, trash bags, something, something dark to kind of cut out the sun. Uh, so that way it's not fading everything in here. Um, so I'm going to clean up a little bit in here, kind of organize the parts a little bit better, um, and just use three for storage for right now. Now, um, this is not going to be a forever fix. Like, I'm not going to hold on to the bus, you know, for years and years to come. Um, but for right now, it's what's best, because I do have a lot of bus parts and know where to put them if I was to get rid of both buses. So three is going to stay. I'm going to make some modifications on the interior. Um, I've been thinking about just getting a sheet of metal and covering up those two windows because there's really no sense in getting two Wayne lifeguard windows just to cover that up. Um, I'm going to go on the sides and find the windows that need to be screwed into the side. Okay, so real quick, um, I know I just said at this point in the video that I was going to add screws. Well, literally after I finished filming what you guys were just watching, I went in and added one screw to each of the windows that was not screwed in at the bottom uh, so that way they would stay put. Most of the windows actually had screws on the bottom um, but some of them were missing so I just went in and added the screws uh, like I said I was. Now this one is being difficult, I can't line it up but it seems to be in there pretty well so uh, I'll probably just leave it how it is uh, and screw them in so that way they'll stay in place. and. The wind, because the way the window is designed, if wind comes in, it'll push against it. Now, it's not going to fall out because the top is kept in with a rub rail up at the roof, but the bottom will kind of go out a little bit. So, um, I'll kind of show you what I'm talking about out here. So, you can see this, well, that's not a, yeah. So, this can come out from the bottom. Uh, you can kind of see it here, you know. Uh, push in and you can hear them moving with the wind um, You can see it right here like this is sticking out So if I push it back in, you know, it'll stay put but that rub rail up there is keeping it where it needs to be So that's the major major thing um, Other than that 59 is still gonna go uh, As it's starting to get warmer. It's March now. So, you know, that's something to look forward to um Outside of that, uh, I've got some sales brochures and possibly a manual, don't know about the manual yet, uh, but definitely two sales brochures coming in that are uh, Amtran related, so there'll definitely be videos coming for those. Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, uh, I found out recently uh, that Lebanon will be making the switch to Thomas um, because the DEF sensors on the CEs I, I don't know what the I, I really I don't understand why IC hasn't you know fixed this but I guess the the sensors on the CEs uh, like to break frequently uh, for the DEF and the Thomases haven't had that issue so um, as of now, from what I've heard, we've got eight more C2s on order. Um, so that'll be interesting. I don't know if they'll be there by the time I'm there uh, in late later this month. 
Uh, so we'll see. Um, but that's kind of interesting. Um, other than that, I don't know. Um, I just, like, I have to say, you know, I, I just, as someone who is interested, or as someone who I see as, you know, my favorite current bus company, it just, it kind of annoys me that they are allowing this issue to... But it just, it, it annoys me that they're allowing this issue to go on. Like, they haven't tried to fix it. I don't know if the trucks are having the same issue or not, but, like, you would think that they would either... I don't know if Thomas's part is something only they're allowed to use or how that would work, but you would think that they would be having the same part. I don't know if it's just the CE. I, I don't know, um, but I just think it's foolish. Um, and, I mean, there are ways to go around DEF. You could order a gasoline-powered CE or a... I don't think that the... I see charges in production yet, but you know, you can order an alternative fuel CE. I don't know that they do propane CEs. Oh, no, they do. What am I thinking? But anyways, um, at that point you'd have to convert, you know, you'd have to have a gas tank or a propane tank. So like, you know, that's all things that cost-wise you'd have to consider. Um, personally, if, if I was running this situation, I would I would weigh out the option of, of going to gasoline-powered CEs. Um, now, I don't know how the DEF affects the REs. I don't know if it's got the same issue. Because, uh, to be honest, not a lot of districts around here have newer ICREs. Uh, the newest ICREs around me are Centervilles. Um, but, anyways. Uh, my point is... You know, if it was me, I would consider going to gasoline-powered CEs because I personally, I have my own opinions. Um, there are things about ICs that I think are better than the other brands. For example, the large doorways. I do not like the small doorways on Thomas's or Bluebird's. Um, and I'm not going to really go into, you know why I think IC is a better brand right now. I'm just saying if it was me, you know, I would try to stick with IC. And also the fact that our fleet has been international since pretty much the beginning, beginning of school buses with the exceptions of a few GMs and Fords in the 80s um, and 90s. So, you know, it, it's just been something we've always done and now it's, you know, going to change the part, uh, you know, how we get parts. Because you can't take a window off of an Amtran and put it on a C2. You can take a window off of an Amtran and put it on a, a second gen uh, that has the older style windows. Um, so it's just, you know, that's a whole part thing. And I guess at the end of the day, if the buses aren't screwing up, like with the sensors, you know, it might be worth it. Um, but I don't know. Um, it is what it is. So that's that. Um, other than that, I've pretty much told you everything else. Uh, as for three, if you guys want to see a video of uh, what I'm going to end up doing to it to get it ready to be like a storage bus, uh, go ahead and uh, let me know and I'll take videos of whatever I do to it. Uh, so I've also got to do a video for School Bus Heritage updating three, I don't know, whatever. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Still waiting on that die-cast model that I pre-ordered. Uh, like I said, sales brochures should be coming soon. So those are some videos to look out for. I hope you guys enjoyed the 153rd scale fleet update. Uh, I thought it came out very well. Um, in my opinion, I, I like the presentation compared to all the other ones I've done. Um, so thank you guys for watching. I know I've said that probably twice now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think. And yeah.